In this episode of Go Fast Brett, Boost Pressure Explained with Vodka. Boost Pressure is pretty simple, right? It's basically just cramming more air into the engine so you go faster. But there's more to it than that. Boost Pressure only tells you part of the story about the air that's going into your engine. So there's two key points that I want to talk about. Pressure ratio versus boost, and gauge versus absolute pressure. Your average boost gauge tells you the amount of pressure that you have greater or less than the surrounding atmosphere. So this is basically gauge pressure. Absolute pressure is different. It is measured relative to absolute zero or a total vacuum. So let's demonstrate. Imagine this bottle up in space. There's no atmosphere whatsoever. There's no pressure and this bottle is completely empty. But if we bring it back down to earth, in this room we have about one bar of pressure. Now I'm going to use bar because it just works out with nice round numbers. So what I'm going to do is fill this bottle up with one bar of atmosphere. Without making a mess. Now if I wave my hand over my magic boost cup, it's now full of boost. So I'm going to add one bar of boost to my bottle here. Hopefully I don't spill it because this could get messy. We have one bar of atmospheric pressure, one bar of boost. Together, the total is two bar, and that is our absolute boost pressure. So the best way to think of a turbo is it's not a pressure adder. It's not actually adding an amount of boost pressure to this whole system. It is basically multiplying the pressure that exists in the atmosphere. So in this case, because atmospheric pressure is one bar and boost pressure is one bar, we effectively have a pressure ratio of two. That is, we have taken the atmospheric pressure and doubled it. So our total pressure or our absolute pressure is two bar, even though boost is only one bar, and that's the important distinction to make. So let me illustrate the relevance of absolute pressure with an example. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my car and go for a drive up the mountain. So we start down here where the atmospheric pressure is one bar. Now we go up a mountain, let's say to 2,000 metres elevation, and the boost gauge is still reading one bar of boost pressure. But the problem is the car is down on power. So what happened to our power? Well the problem is, at 2,000 metres the atmospheric pressure is now only 0.8 bar. So even though the boost gauge is still showing one bar, we only started with 0.8. So that means our total absolute pressure getting into the engine is now only 1.8 bar where it was two bar before. So that's why the car's down on power. But of course, all we could do, crank the boost controller up, add a bit more boost and bring it up to two bar total. Let's do that now. Awesome. So I've just cranked the boost and we're back to two bar total absolute pressure getting into the engine. But wait, the car is still down on power. Now this is where pressure ratio comes in. So in this case, while we're up the mountain, we've only got 0.8 bar of atmospheric pressure to work with. So we actually had to compress it more. We're now compressing it two and a half times to get to our peak absolute pressure of two bar. Whereas back down here at sea level, when we started with one bar of atmospheric pressure, we only had to compress it twice with a pressure ratio of two to get to the same absolute. Now, despite what people say about turbos using wasted energy from the exhaust, Boost pressure doesn't come for free. The fact that we've actually had to compress the atmospheric pressure more in this case means that we've created more heat in the intake charge. So the intake charge could be 35 degrees centigrade hotter than it was before. Now the shaft speed of the turbine has gone up 20,000 RPM, the exhaust back pressure has also gone up, and the ECU may be retarding timing to prevent knock. So what we're saying is the turbo is basically slogging its guts out to get to the same absolute pressure. Everything is hotter, everything is more stressed, and we're also down on power. Now if we took this same car up Pikes Peak, the altitude at the top is about 4,600 meters, so that's more than double what we just did here. The atmospheric pressure up there is only about 0.6 bar, so the pressure ratio is actually now 3.3. So as you go higher and the pressure on the turbo intake reduces, the problems of exhaust back pressure, extra heat, and all that sort of stuff, they just get much, much worse. Well that's all well and good, but the problem is in Australia our mountains just aren't that tall. So why should I care about pressure ratio? Well the last thing I want you to consider is the effect of intake restrictions before your turbo. 
and what that does to your car's performance. Even if your factory airbox creates as little as 0.1 bar restriction before the turbo, which is entirely possible, it's very similar to driving at 1000 metres altitude and all the negative effects that we've just discussed still apply. Now I'm not suggesting you remove your intake and run no filter like a hero, but it is worth considering how important pressure ratio is because even a tiny drop in the turbo intake pressure has a much larger effect and negative consequences on your boost pressure than you may realise. Hopefully this visual representation has boosted your understanding of the topic and will help you think about more ways to modify your car for best performance. Just think about vodka.